Now for a trip inside Trump World's Hall of Mirrors. But first, before we enter, let's make one thing really clear. Most Americans believe that the Russian effort to attack the 2016 election is a serious matter that should be fully investigated. Poll after poll has shown that. But among President Trump's base, there is deep distrust of Robert Mueller's probe. To understand why, just turn on your radio. Hey, welcome to the Sean Hannity Show. Jay Sekulow and Mayor Rudy Giuliani. How about that? Giuliani and Sekulow. Isn't that City? nice? It is. Hmm. We could start all kinds of speculation. This would be funny if it weren't so serious. Of all the people Hannity could have had fill in for him, he went with the president's lawyers, gave them three hours to laugh it up and defend the president. And that is really revealing. It reveals us to us how the pro-Trump media world works hand in hand with Trump. It is a collaboration that helps Trump, but hurts the public. Why? Because Trump's defenders are drawing attention away from what matters most, Russia's efforts to attack America back then and happening again now. By making this all about Trump and swearing he's innocent and saying he's the victim, they are missing the big issue. A lot of questions about this investigation. It surely looks like an illegitimate investigation. The President of the United States said this a long time back, that it's a witch hunt. And, uh, well, you could describe it a lot of ways, a hoax, like uh, like uh, Greg's book. But you look at the questions, they yep. keep flowing out. You heard him mention Greg's book there, right, first name basis. He was referring to guest Greg Jarrett, who works for Fox News, who wrote a book for Rupert Murdoch's publishing house, claiming that the entire probe is an illegal plot to overturn the election. Millions of people believe this stuff. The president apparently believes this stuff. He's always using the word illegal and rigged witch hunt. Now, Trump has promoted Jarrett's book not once, not twice, but three times on Twitter. And that is how it works. It's like a house of mirrors where you're seeing the same thing over and over and over again, except it's distorted. I was taking most of the news these days. I was making a joke the other day that uh, sometimes you're making the news, sometimes you're in the news, and sometimes you're just talking about the news. I will tell you, these days I am uh, doing both or all three. I am making the news, talking about the news, and have been in the news. Now that is true. The president's lawyers keep talking and talking and talking so much that they are, for now, driving the news narrative about Mueller's probe. Meanwhile, Mueller's team is only speaking through court filings and trials. So Trump's team speaks so much that I think we risk forgetting what this is really all about. Remember, the special counsel was ordered to investigate Russia's actions and any links and or coordination with anyone in the Trump campaign's orbit. The word collusion never even appears in the document. This has never been about collusion. It's about coordination, conspiracy, Russia's attempts to divide Americans. GOP Senator Ben Sass called out what he said is the, the Trump-centric framing the other day. He said the press is contributing to this problem too. And the result is, quote, few Americans understand Putin's agents are now picking at the scabs of every cultural skirmish we have from race to guns, to media tribes. That's the one thing Rudy is not talking about. He's playing politics, trying to sow doubt, offering a counter narrative to the base, trying to win in the court of public opinion. He yaks on cable news, Trump hears it, Trump reflects it back on Twitter, and that's how the Hall of Mirrors continues. Here's a great example. Just last weekend, Fox host and radio star Mark Levin dined with Hannity and Trump out of Bedminster. Keep that coziness in mind when you hear this. Robert Mueller is a greater threat to this republic and the Constitution than anything Vladimir Putin did during the campaign. And I'm no fan of Vladimir Putin. What questions exactly does Mr. Mueller have? I'm talking to you, Mr. Mueller, exactly what questions that you have where you seek to turn this country upside down and disenfranchise the over 60 million people who voted for this president of the United States? Levin's colleague, Janine Pirro, has been promoting that same line of thinking. In the pro-Trump media world, the real conspiracy is about Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton trying to stop Trump from winning. Pirro went after Mueller again Saturday night, even told him to get a defense attorney. Remember, Trump keeps hearing this. He keeps reacting to this rhetoric. He keeps reflecting it to his fans. On Sunday morning, here he is approvingly tweeting out part of Pirro's rant. That's what led the NYT's ace reporter, Michael Schmidt, to react by saying, hey, it's been 15 months into the special counsel probe, and I'm still not convinced Trump understands the depth and breadth of the obstruction investigation, the threat it poses, 
and the issues his own public statements and tweets have created for him. So why is that? Why doesn't Trump get it? It's because of the pro-Trump media world. It's because of this hall of mirrors. Trump doesn't sh trust the fact checks. He doesn't trust the people who are trying to explain to him how serious this probe is. He sometimes doesn't seem to trust the intelligence about Russia's interference. He only trusts his Fox friends. Trump willingly walked into this house of mirrors. Heck, he helped build it. But does he know how to get out?